What is, what is your purpose in life? What is your vision? When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that you tell yourself? What energizes you? How many of us dare to make our dreams realities? See, we live in a, we live in a funny world. We live in a world where we live our lives based on other people's expectations of us. Every day, people give up the loves of their lives, their hopes and dreams, their visions, because they allow other people's fears and doubts to become their own. And when we think about it, that right there is the cause, or one of the main causes of our anxiety, our depression, our stress. See, our visions and our purposes, our dreams have us going one way, and other people's expectations have us pulling another way. So we are being stretched. And that stretch right there is the cause of that pain. This talk today is really about letting go. It's about letting go so that you can manifest and realize your own vision. Create the life that you want. So that you can share and build positively with the world. See, my vision is to connect with people, to build with them, to show them that they too can be aware of their power to create, that they too have the ability to manifest within themselves, to share with the world. And I do that primarily through music. I found my vision through hip-hop. By the end of this talk, hopefully you will realize the importance of self-creation. Being aware of this ability to self-create then allows you to be in control of that process. You can create your own expectations for self and live by them. And you can build a positive future. So where do we begin? For me, it was hip-hop. See, a lot of people have or had this belief that hip-hop is really just a style of music. It's a genre of music. But it's actually more than that. It's a consciousness and a culture. See, hip-hop was, was originated in the 1970s in the Bronx, New York City. It was created by a group of people who felt like they needed to manifest and build their own world because the world around them had neglected them, had pushed them to the side. So they found new ways of expressing themselves through b-boying or breakdancing, graffiti art or street art, DJing and MCing. People found ways to express themselves, but more importantly, they found ways to create themselves. New ways that they could manifest their own visions. One of the cool things about hip-hop is, is a lot of people who are involved in it and who become a part of it create their own names for themselves. They rename themselves. And the idea of that is so that they can paint a picture before you even meet them. You know a little bit about them before you even meet them. It's a story, but it is also part of their vision. See, when you ask hip-hop fans about who the founders of hip-hop were, they won't tell you their birth names. Nobody knows them by their birth names. I mean, historians do. But they will tell you their true names. DJ Cool Herc, Africa Bam Bada, DJ Grandmaster Flash. These names tell a story. Africa Bambata, for instance, before he was known as Africa Bambata, was a leader of a gang called the Black Spades. And he was very much into and about this street life. At some point in his life, after tragedies, experiencing a number of tragedies, 
he realized that he needed to be something greater, that he could be a change maker. He started to formulate his vision, inspired by stories of African culture and African history. He renamed himself to Africa Bambara and transformed the Black Spades into an organization called the Universal Zulu Nation. And the Universal Zulu Nation was all about bringing together people who loved hip-hop, building a community beyond gang differentiation, beyond race and color, and uniting in a spirit of peace, love, unity, and having fun. He used hip-hop to manifest his vision, which, to, which was to create a, peace, a peace-loving community. For me, I used hip-hop to find my vision. And that began when I was about 14 years old. I started writing lyrics and started writing poetry, started writing rhymes. And I would show my closest friends the lyrics to these songs. And they would say, you know what? That's really cool. That's fresh. You should call yourself Fresh MC. And I said, okay. (laughs) But if I took that name, I wanted to redefine it first. See, I wanted to make it my own. So I broke it down into an acronym. For me, fresh was forever rising, exceeding sudden hardships. For me, it was all about overcoming, overcoming struggle, overcoming challenges. I mean, the first songs that I ever wrote display that. The first song I ever wrote was called World of Discrimination, about my experiences in overcoming discrimination and racism. I wrote a song called Modern Day Soldier about how these days we may not be fighting battles with swords or with weapons um, on an everyday basis, but we are fighting battles with our minds. So it was all about this idea of overcoming. At one point, I sat down with a good friend of mine, Matt Knox, and he pulled out a big sheet of paper and he wrote El Fresh in the middle. And he said, what do you want to become? I was like, well, okay, I just met you, but that's an interesting question. And we started brainstorming all these different ideas of, of what I wanted to become. And I said to him, you know, I want to be, like, I want to be a leader. I want to be this person who talks about powerful ideas, who's socially and politically conscious, who can advocate for youth issues. Like, I started saying all these things that I wanted to become. I wanted to tour the country. And we put it up on the wall after we had done this mind map, this big butcher's paper of mind map of ideas. And within a year, after looking at that every day, we realized that I had accomplished all of those things. I had been doing workshops with young people, talking, them about, talking to them about how they could use hip-hop and songwriting as a way to manifest and create beyond themselves, how they could tell their story. I had traveled the country and toured with hip-hop legends. I had performed on many different stages and continued to write songs with a powerful message, an inspiring message. So... Just seeing that process come to life of, for one, we had, you know, I had this vision and seeing it manifest itself was very powerful for me. And at, after that year, I realized that there had to be something more. Because this idea of El Fresh, always overcoming, always rising, kept me going in directions I needed to go, but it didn't have an end point. I was rising, but to what? There had to be something greater. And that was the birth of the lion. See, the L in L fresh refers to lion. In my culture, in Sikhism, all males have the middle name Singh, which translates to lion. So I wanted to have that cultural element in my name. But... In 2006, after finishing high school, I traveled to India with my family. And we went to the Golden Temple in Amritsar. And for me, that place had a great amount of significance. I'd known about the history of the place, um, how it was important to the people of the Sikh faith. But while I was there, meditating, reflecting, I felt a very powerful feeling in my chest that almost moved me to tears. And I didn't know what it was, but 
it, it, it's this inspiration that I have in my chest that tells me that there must be something greater out there for me, that there is a greater purpose out there for me. And I keep it with me to this day. Reflecting on that experience, I realized that that was the birth of the lion. At the end of 2009, having completed all the things we set out to do in my first vision of that Elfresh mind map, I decided to make the lion a, a bigger part of my name, and my name became Elfresh the lion. People started to refer to me not as, hey, Fresh, it was, yo, lion. And to me, that was like, okay, wow. But I started to realize that I could become this idea. See, the lion is an idea. My vision of connecting with people and building with people, sharing with them my experiences and, and speaking to them about how they can become aware of their power to self-create, comes from this idea of the lion. I may not ever live to see my whole vision of music and connecting with people and all those things happen, but the lion will exist beyond me. It's this idea of connecting with a greater purpose beyond myself. At that point, I realized that music was much more than just storytelling or uh, the sharing of emotions. And when I started to do workshops, I realized that I needed to be giving these people, the young people in the workshops, a lot more than just how to write a song. Because in reality, the kids who come to the workshop, maybe out of 15 or 20, one or two of them will continue the songwriting process as a thing that they could, you know, do regularly. The rest of them will probably drop it, but reflect on the experience of how great it was to be a part of that team workshop exercise of creating a song. So there had to be something more. So at the start of every workshop, now, I get all the kids to pull out a piece of paper, write a name for themselves in the middle. They come up with their own hip-hop names, right? It's like, it's like a new name for themselves. They manifest it, write it in the middle, and then write all the things that they want to become. One example was, that I can tell you was, of this, this, this young person who who'd been dealing with a lot, going through rehab programs. And he wrote in the middle, flawless. He said, when I write lyrics, I want it to be flawless every single time. So that when people hear it, they go, yeah, that's amazing. And I said, okay, well, what do you need to be able to do that? And he goes, well, I need confidence in myself. I need to be able to tell my stories in a unique way. I need to be able to be a really good lyricist and build up song techniques and all these kind of things. He started to fill up his page. And then 10 minutes later, he'd go sit in the corner, write a, write a song and finish it in like 10 minutes and then sing it for the first time and be like, that was flawless. Now I'm flawless MC. I got a call this morning from another person who I've been working with for a year. And for over a year, actually. And here's a person who has dealt with combating drug addiction for many, many years, who has dealt with poverty and homelessness for many, many years. And he called me up this morning. He lives overseas now and said, I'm on my way, you know. I'm here overseas. I had a purpose coming here overseas. I want to reconnect with my family and show them that they too can overcome drug addiction, poverty, homelessness, just like I did. My vision, he said, is to now show people that they can make it through the struggle too. And that to me is more important than songwriting. That to me in a workshop context and an everyday context is the manifestation of a vision. What I want to do today and what I want to leave you guys with is, is a challenge. I want you to start to manifest your vision. Outside and during the lunch break, you'll see pieces of paper that have been put together for this purpose of you being able to start up your own mind map. You'll find them in the foyer. Pick one up, come up with your own cool name, put it in the middle and write all the things that you want to become and email it to me. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's build. 
See, the idea of having a vision is so important because once you have that for yourself, you will go where you're meant to go and you will be who you're meant to be. See, I think of it like this. If we're in a room, a beautiful room, with so many things around us, and at the end of the room, we can see all the things that we want to be and all the things that we want to become. And above us, the sun is shining really brightly. We take step fo- steps forward to try and get to that place where we're meant to go, and it's easy because we can see everything. Our pathway is clear. What happens when the sun blows up and disappears and a room goes pitch black? Our next steps are not so certain as they were before when the sun was there. When you take that step, it's like, am I going, in, going the right way? Was it, was it that way or was it that way? Or which way am I supposed to go? When you have a vision, you don't become reliant on an external force, on the sun. You become your own light. That darkness does not scare you. It is merely an existence, and you accept it for what it is. When you have a vision, you know and you can see what's at the end of that room, and you can walk towards it without fear, without fear of uncertainty. And you can get there. When you have a vision... You become the light. And you become what you're meant to be. Thank you.